What happened in that truck didn't stay in that truck. From a one-time whoopsie to being divorced and unable to let go of her betrayed spouse, this is the story of Delphina who gives a brutally honest confession. That will definitely trigger you. The lights of Vegas couldn't keep her secret hidden, so she signed a contract with the devil trying to make it go away, but she never expected to be played. Before we start, when you're visiting the like button's office, make sure to rearrange some keys on his keyboard. Warning, the following confession will be triggering. I cheated on my awesome husband with a neighbor a few weeks ago. This is something I regret and I'm truly sorry for. Let me start at the beginning, and I'm going to use fake names to keep our identity private. My husband Nico, age 48, and I, Delphina, age 44, have been married 24 years and have three adult children. We all live in the Vegas area. My husband works for a company that supports gaming machines, and I worked in the casino food and beverage industry. My husband has been with his company for 23 years and does really well earning over six figures. Like my husband, I too was a loyal employee and worked for a great company for 10 years until I was laid off. This sickness, or whatever you call it, basically wiped out our industry and it's just starting to crawl back to life, but many places will never reopen. It's not like we need my income to live, but I'd love to be back working now, as it would help to get my mind off the mess I created. Also, I may need the income if my husband decides to divorce me. Here's what happened. As you know, Vegas was locked down from March through June. As a result, I was laid off in March, but my husband's company kept him steadily employed, except for the two weeks when everything was shut down. I was fine with all this for the first few weeks, but like everyone else, I started getting antsy being confined to the house. The isolation and not being able to go anywhere was driving me crazy. As soon as the casinos started to partially reopen in June, I started going out to the locals' casinos around where we live to fill time. I generally go right after my morning walk and stay there all morning, then return home in time to eat a late lunch. I had a nice little routine going and it was keeping me busy and entertained enough. Now this is how fate sometimes deals you a bad hand or at least dangles temptation in front of you at a time when you are weak and vulnerable. One day, I drove across the valley to a popular casino I had never been to before. While there, I ran into a neighbor, call him Dave. Unfortunately for him, his company permanently closed down and went out of business just a few months after the lockdown. We got to talking and like me, he started going out to the casinos to fill time and to clear his head. We talked briefly and then headed into the casino. It was his first time there as well. I saw a type of slot that I wanted to play, and Dave said he'd try his luck on them as well and sat two chairs down from me. The machines we chose were hot, and we both started winning. Each of us were up over $200 and played those same machines all morning until we decided to cash out and grab something to eat. I packed a cooler full of fruit, cheese, lunch meat, power bars, and other snacks, as I planned to stay there much of the day. With the casino only having limited food options available, I invited Dave to join me for lunch at my car. He asked if I was sure, and I told him absolutely. We went back to my car and I opened the tailgate, and we stood back there talking and eating. Standing up felt great after sitting for so long in front of the machines. After we ate, we took a walk around the little downtown area near the casino, to look at all the empty streets and closed stores. It was a truly depressing sight. We then headed back into the casino where we gambled for a couple more hours, sticking near each other. While we were leaving, Dave asked if I was going to do it all again tomorrow, and I said I was, but didn't know where. He suggested we come back to the same casino since it was so lucky for us and we had such an enjoyable day. I said, okay, sounds good. He said he'll bring lunch this time, and we can eat at his car tomorrow. I said, okay, that's a deal. Driving home, I called Nico and told him about my day. I told him I ran into Dave at the casino 
and then he and I just went on chatting for my entire 40-minute drive home. I didn't give him any specific details of my day, just that I ran into Dave. I know now from doing online research, this was the point where I officially started cheating on my husband. I'm crying as I'm typing this as I feel so foolish and selfish now. The next day, we met at the same casino and had lunch at his truck. Along with the food, Dave brought a bottle of champagne and two glasses to celebrate our winnings from the previous day. At the end of the lunch, as we walked back into the casino, Dave kissed me and I didn't resist. We got into the casino and started playing slots again, sitting side by side, but our hormones got the best of us. We ended up inside the big back seat of his truck a short time later, where we spent the next hour with each other. Again, I feel so ashamed and disgusted with myself just typing this. After we finished, Dave wanted me to go back into the casino and I said, no, I'm going home. I told him this was a big mistake and we cannot see each other again. Dave kept trying to explain to me how no one would ever find out as long as we just continued to meet up in the morning at locations far from our homes and didn't communicate any other way. I told him absolutely not, gave him a friendly hug and headed home. I wanted so much to hear Nico's voice at this point, so I called him and we talked as I drove home. When I got home, I took the longest bath I've ever taken. That night I cooked Nico his favorite meal, dressed in his favorite mini sundress, and made sure I took really good care of him. This was not uncommon for us, and Nico knows whenever I cook his favorite food and wear a revealing outfit, he's going to be getting something special for dessert. I've been doing this for him for the entire 25 years we've been together, and it never gets old or boring. I can honestly say, I'm more in love and attracted to him now than ever before. Everything was going great for the next two weeks, and I thought I had put the terrible mistake I made with Dave behind me never to be discovered. Then it happened. Then one afternoon, Nico sent me a text, stating he'd be working overtime and wouldn't be home until very late. He said not to cook anything as he'd just pick something up. I asked him to call me when he was free or on his way home, but he never did, which should have been a red flag for me, as this was totally unlike him. When he eventually got home at 8 p.m., he had my brother-in-law and his wife with him, nothing out of the ordinary, as we hung out frequently and are all best friends. When they entered the house, I knew something was wrong, so asked if everything was okay. Nico asked me to sit down and said he wanted his brother and sister-in-law with him, as witnesses. I didn't know what he was about to say, but my heart sunk into my stomach. He then proceeded to tell me he had met with Dave's wife earlier, and she told him everything about my affair with Dave. I asked him, what did she tell you? Nico calmly told me. Don't play dumb. I have photos and video proof of your affair on my phone. And with that, he pulled up a photo of Dave and I kissing outside of his truck. With that, I started crying and said I could explain. I told him it was not an affair. It was a single mistake, and I was so sorry. Nico basically told me in so many words that to him it didn't matter if it was one time or 1,000 times, our marriage was over. Hearing this, I nearly passed out and put my head down on the table and started crying, while my husband and both in-laws just sat there watching me wallow in agony for over 10 minutes without comforting me. Eventually, I gathered the strength to stop crying and lifted my head. When I did, Nico told me he wanted me to leave. I begged him not to do this, but he insisted. I told him I didn't want to leave our home or leave his side. He told me if I didn't leave that he would be leaving and the next time I would hear from him would be through his attorney. Since this was all my fault, I didn't want him to have to leave the house, so I asked him, if I leave, where do you want me to go? He said he didn't care where I went, he just wanted to be away from me. At this point, I was hoping my in-laws would speak up and offer to have me stay at their house, but they didn't, and along with my husband, just stared at me with disgust. I went to the bedroom and packed a few things. When I came out, I told Nico I was leaving and asked if I could come back tomorrow. He said yes, but not until after he gets home from work. I went and stayed with one of my friends from work. She's become a good friend, 
and a wonderful confidant. We stayed up most of the night, talking about what I'd done. She was a big help as unfortunately she has experience dealing with such situations. She too had a one night stand. Her husband found out and took her back. They stayed together for eight months, but ended up divorcing. Side note, he recently got married to one of their former neighbors. We both think he was seeing her while married, but she doesn't have proof. The next afternoon, I called my husband and we talked briefly. We arranged to meet at our house at 6 p.m. When I arrived, my in-laws were once again with him. When I saw them, I asked if we could speak in private, but Nico insisted he wanted them there as witnesses. I told him I would never do anything to hurt him. With that, he just gave me an evil eye stare. My husband proceeds to tell me he would be divorcing me and had already secured an attorney and that I should do the same. With this, I again burst out crying and nearly passed out. He said, we could both live in the house until it was final but as roommates, and not as husband and wife. I pleaded, but he was hard-headed and unmovable. He then told me he wanted me to find some place to stay for the next week, as he needed to clear his mind and didn't want me around. He then proceeded to tell me that he already met with our three kids earlier in the day and told them everything. He said they all offered to let me couch surf, so I had a place to stay if I had the guts to face them. I asked him why he told them without me, and he said they need to know the reason why we're divorcing. I said we are not divorcing and that I will not sign anything. I told him we can fix this and that I love him more than life. He just told me he's done and said something to the effect of, It was a great run, but now it's done. Or something antagonizing like that. That night, I stayed at my oldest daughter's apartment. My son and youngest daughter met us there, and the three of them yelled at me until 11 p.m. They finally let up, and we hugged it out, and I agreed to spend two to three nights with each of them until their dad lets me come back home. While they were angry and disappointed, they want their dad and I to work things out. I'm sitting here on my daughter's couch while she's at work, and I thought I would write this post to ask for help. Have any of you been in my situation? Specifically, I'd like to hear from women who've been married for years and had a one-night stand. How did you cope? Did your marriage survive? What did you do to make things right? Thanks for reading, Delphina. This update serves as clarification for my previous post. I have never cheated before and will never cheat again. I do not have a gambling problem, nor do I have any other addictions. I have not talked to Dave and don't ever plan to. I do want to apologize to his wife, though. I don't know how Dave's wife got the pictures and video. I did submit to an at-home STD test and will share the results with my husband. Yes, Nico is definitely the father of my three kids. Don't even go there, people. That's ridiculous. I was in your shoes, but in my case, it was a two-week affair that my husband discovered. He took me back and basically treated me like a toy and house servant for six weeks until he presented me with divorce papers. That was three years ago and I still miss him to this day, but he has moved on and moved far away. Like you, I'm crying just writing this. My wife cheated on me on a cruise she went on with her sister and closest friend. This happened four months ago and she confessed right when she got back. I've stayed with her and she's done everything right since then, but it's been a living nightmare for me. I can't bring myself to have relations with her and I've decided to divorce but haven't told her yet. It's over, you can't fix this. I had a one night stand after a night of drinking with friends. My husband caught me in the act. That was four years ago. We're still together, but just roommates at this point. No intimacy since. As part of our agreement, I gave him a one-sided open marriage. He's been in a relationship with his high school girlfriend ever since our situation. I have to accept this as I love him. I'm still hoping for things to turn better. Sorry, I've not updated sooner, but as you can imagine, I've had a lot going on. First, I wanna start off by telling you some great news. Nico and I are still married. It's been difficult and I gave up a lot to convince him to stay, 
But in late October, he finally agreed and we just signed all the paperwork. Now here's where all of you are going to think I'm crazy. Be mindful that I was desperate at this point and would do anything to keep my husband and our marriage, which mean more to me than anything. I don't think I could survive or would want to without Nico. There would be no point in doing so, except for my kids, who I also love dearly. Now, for what I gave up, be nice. I signed a postnuptial agreement with my husband. That basically reduces my share of our assets to 25 versus 50%, if we divorce. This does not include real estate. That would still be divided 50, 50. But everything else, savings, stocks, 401k, and all other assets would be split 75 to 25% if we divorce. Also, no alimony, none at all. The only stipulation is that we stay married for at least a year and live together. As part of the agreement, I also gave Nico a permanent one-sided, him-only, open relationship. I tried rationalizing with him on this for just a free pass, or for three months max, since I only had a one-night stand, but he wouldn't go for it. He told me it's forever or we don't have an agreement. It took me weeks to find a good attorney to represent me, as none of them wanted anything to do with my agreement once I explained what I wanted. I finally did, and now it's all in place. How have things gone between Nico and I? In a word, cold, very, very cold. We are basically roommates in a strange situation where one party loves the other, but one party, Nico, truly seems to dislike me. I will not say hate, because in Nico's own words, he said, he doesn't hate me, he just doesn't like me the same anymore. Since the discovery, he comes home late, doesn't spend time with me, and doesn't let me do anything for him. He will not even eat anything I prepare. In fact, he will not eat anything in an opened package. He actually told me he doesn't trust me with his food. Seriously? That's just crazy talk, as I would never do anything to harm him. I love him more than I love myself, more than life itself. He's my world, but he just can't see past the stupid mistake I made. One mistake in 25 years, and he's willing to just throw me away like a candy wrapper. I'm ranting now as I'm just so full of emotion. I just want my man back like before. As for intimacy, there's been none. No kissing, hugging, or cuddling, and we sleep in separate rooms. He did allow me to give him belt kisses back in September, but insisted on wearing protection. There was no intimacy, just the act as if it was a chore. After he finished, he just left and went back to our master bedroom and left me alone in the guest room where I'm staying. No kiss or thank you, babe, nothing. Now, for the question you're probably asking, has he used his open marriage pass? I don't know. I don't think so. And of course, I hope he never does, as it will destroy me mentally. I know that sounds selfish, but if he ever does have relations with another woman, I will lose my mind. He's my man and mine only, and I will do everything to keep it that way. That's all I've got for now. Please send me your honest thoughts, as I can't wait to read your responses, even the rough ones. I know some of you are going to think I'm nuts, but my husband is my world, and I will sacrifice everything and do anything to keep him. Why are you torturing yourself? Give him the divorce. He's acting passive-aggressive, and that's not healthy. Has he always been like this? Yes, you made a mistake, a single mistake in 25 years, by the way. There was an international illness going on. Does he take that into consideration? You can do better or better yet. You can be great on your own. You don't need toxic masculinity in your life, trust me. I feel your pain as I was once in your shoes. I cheated on my husband with my ex-husband just one time. My husband wanted to divorce me, but I begged and gave him an open marriage. He then started a eight-month relationship with a woman from his work, who was also in an open marriage. They ended their relationship last year, and now I've got him back. Hang in there. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Cue the sad music. Your marriage is over, Delphina, and you can't get it back. You destroyed it, and the best thing to do is move on. My wife did something similar and did everything to keep me around, but I was done. We divorced, and I did date her for seven months after, until I met the woman who is now my wife. It sounds like your husband has the same plan. 
For all the enablers commenting and giving false hope, get out of your fantasy island. Shame on all of you. It's been a while since I updated here and I've gotten so many requests, so I've come back to let you know what's going on in my life. My marriage didn't survive my mistake, and Nico and I divorced. Everything was made final back on August, the 17th. After four months of living like roommates with no intimacy, Nico sat me down one day for the talk. He said while he still loves me and always will, he no longer is in love with me and doesn't like me. He said that he wanted to start dating other women but doesn't want to while we're married, even though I've given my approval and have an agreement for him to do so. He told me he just can't. He said he just wants to end things now so we can split things 50, 50 and go our separate ways. I tried everything to convince him otherwise, but he didn't budge. It was a terrible time and I fell into a very dark place, but Nico helped me through it. Once I agreed to the divorce and started the process, he was relieved. No longer under pressure, he started talking to me more and spending time with me, but only as friends. We both agreed to sell the house before our divorce was final, and it sold in six days back in March. After the sale, we secured a six-month lease on a new luxury apartment which expires on the 1st of October. We live together and have gotten along great. I feel like we are kids again. Being away from our old neighborhood has been liberating for both of us, as it was awkward living there, as you can imagine. Regarding Dave and his wife, they divorced too, and Dave moved to Los Angeles and is working in a store in a casino down there. I did get the chance to apologize to Dave's wife in person. It was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. I was so nervous I couldn't speak, but she made me feel at ease and quickly accepted my apology. It turns out Dave had done this before, more than once. Also, he's a recovering alcoholic and gambler. The reason she caught us on film is that she suspected Dave was back gambling and drinking again and hired a private investigator to follow him around for three days. The affair, along with Dave's continued alcohol and gambling problems, enabled her to secure full custody of their daughters, ages 13 and 14. For this, she was actually grateful. Wow, what a mess. How did I fall for someone like that? Now back to Nico and I. As I said, since moving and divorcing, we've been getting closer. We're back to sharing meals, and even went on a couple of dates with each other since moving to the apartment. Then this past Sunday, we were intimate again. It just happened spontaneously, and was by far the best I've ever had, and I know Nico was very satisfied as well. He made it clear to me that we're not back together, and I'm fine with that. It's such a rush. I feel like I'm 19 again and get butterflies like when we first met. I'm on a natural high now that is so intoxicating, I can't describe it. Now one complication. Nico bought a house out in Parump, about 60 miles away. He wanted to get away from the hustle and bustle of Vegas and move to a place with a small town feel and conservative values. I was hoping he'd offer to let me move in with him, but he hasn't. I asked him if he would be okay if I moved out to Pahrump, too, and he said that would be fine. I've looked around town, but there are very few apartment options, so I'm considering buying a used RV. Nico's new home has three acres and has two spots with full RV hookups located about 200 and from the house. He said I could park there if I chose to do so, but would need to enter into a lease agreement and pay rent to him, which I'm fine with. He also reminded me that this doesn't mean we're back together and that he plans to date other women and doesn't want me to be jealous. I told him I was fine with that, as I'm going to treat him so good. He's not going to want anyone else. Finally, to all the women in the comments who have been criticizing my husband and saying he has toxic masculinity and things like that, please stop. This whole thing is 110% my fault. I own it and everything falls on me for what's happened. I'm just glad Nico and the good Lord gave me a second chance at love and life. All the best to you, Delphina. As we end this story and look back on it, we can clearly see how one single moment can have big consequences in which it doesn't matter how regretful you are, 
Delphina seems to be in a fantasy headspace, thinking there's a path to redemption. What do you think? Before you go, don't forget, when you're visiting the Like Button's office, make sure to rearrange some keys on the keyboard. Thank you for staying till the end. You're the one I make these episodes for. See you in the next one. Special gratitude goes to the channel Find Your Alpha for covering OP's story in its original format. This episode is edited differently for the Royal AI audience. Be sure to check his content out, it's great, and his insights are valuable to the modern man and woman.